though I mostly do BJJ, I also think judo is an awesome martial art. In this episode, 6th degree black belt Juan Montenegro talks about the ratio of standing versus ground techniques in his dojo, the differences of groundwork in BJJ versus judo, how judo rules have affected the sport, and he also teaches some great tachi waza and ne waza. I'm an avid traveler, co-founder of BudoVideos.com, jiu-jitsu black belt, and lifelong student of the martial arts, who strives to know more about the competitors and instructors who are revolutionizing the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Join me in my journey as I travel, train, learn, and get rolled up. seminal 50th episode of Rolled Up, I thought I'd do something a little different. For the first time on the show, I'm at a judo dojo to work on my stand-up. Although there are many options for jiu-jitsu in Southern California, the same can't be said for judo. High quality judo instruction is rare in Orange County, but it can definitely be found here at OC Judo. Juan Montenegro started his training in Peru at the young age of 14 and is now a sixth degree black belt in judo. For over 20 years now, OC Judo has hosted seminars of various Olympic world champions and has become the preeminent spot in the county to learn how to throw, grapple, and submit your opponent with Judo. Unlike many BJJ gyms, Juan's warm-ups are quite extensive. The warm-ups start rather simple and progress towards more complex movements with a lot of focus on warming up for the throws, or in Judo terms, Uchikomi. Judo practitioners will drill these entries over and over so they'll be ready when they go for the actual throw. Once you see one, you want to try to stay back your leg and, and lean in forward, right? Because what he wants is this right here, like this. See, so now here, mm-hmm. he can come, he can get easy, so go right, right? So one, so for the counter, the right leg, as soon as you feel it, you stay back and then you come. To, so the counter, so you do so right? One, two, three, four. One. Mm-hmm. I turn this type of one. Look at his body here. He's gonna break his balance. My left leg. Oh, I wanna stay back. Right. That's one. So one. I assume he's coming, but when he do the counter, totally have to go strong so you so that you feel <coughs> when you can stop because if if he goes off. So to guide it, you don't feel it. You don't know, you know, mm-hmm. when exactly you're gonna you're gonna count so it's one, he he, he go nice strong so to guide it, so 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 I can you know one mm-hmm. one 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 and sometimes yeah, that's what as soon you feel it, it's coming one he goes so to guide it, so to guide it, one so I stop so you see mm-hmm. once I stop the first throw the right away I break his balance very important work always with your hands Big balance, one. Now this leg here like this, my left leg I step back, one. Alright, let's go. Let's, let's practice so to get it first and the counter a couple times. But hydrate, let's go. So since I, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, most of this, what we do is on the ground and of course it varies by school but in my experience most schools teach at least 75% of their of the teaching is on the ground maybe 25% or less is standing in your classes what is the ratio of standing versus ground techniques with me at the dojo I try to do 50-50 because I think it's important both ways you know when you practice only tachiwaza only um, 
80% and 20% of the wasa. The wasa is not as strong, right? So and what I do here is I try to keep half and half so that when the people get coming, they can learn both, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time. Most of the time, right? So you pull, you throw, and he's trying to go stomach. One, and you're gonna try to catch a field one. You first you to turn the scoop in, catch it, the arms so that way he, he cannot start going down the to stomach. See if, if you see he he started going to the stomach and you wanna keep your head up. But to pass here, here, if you pass this side, here like this, you wanna switch the arm. Keep 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 going stomach. So one, no, I step one, I pass this side. But when you pass in this arm it has to be all way in. All way in one. And then and then this side, this leg is going to go in one in. And now when, when you pass here like this, you're going to use your body. You're going to go all the way down, 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 and control the head. One, and I want to go from a second to ten. But when you want to go for your, as I call me, and do, there's a stronger pain. You can put your knee on the hips, and the other legs extend. It. But it, it's a lot stronger than most of you. One, I can go this one, like this, this one. Sometimes some people do this one too, but this one sometimes he can escape. He's moving around a lot and then he can, he can do the frame. Now here, anyway. Right, right, this is one, and the other one, you wanna, you wanna come, come here. So practice, it. just, I'll put on each one, I'll go with one. Come on, go here, Ooh, and go with one. Right? If you see, go, I'm at here and in. You want to pass this side when his legs is like this. Uh, see, so now you want to go this way. Right? Because you don't want to pass this way when his legs is like this because you want to. And then, and have that. You can No, no, no. One, here, if you rush to pass, now you go to have that. Okay. Now you be here. Right? I mean, you can still try to get out of the legs and use more time, right? So, because now I'm going to go down. Go so What? You need to. What? Now, now, if it's like this, this way, you go this way, one. But if you turn it this way, like this, like this. No, go that way. Go so One. So now here, you can choose. If you go this way, that way. Because now his leg is down. So now you can go past this side. Because it's not. Mm. 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 No. Mm. And we'll do the same. One, now I catch him one in. I want to go my second from from my pen. But then mm. most important is to learn how to catch the arm. That's the key, basically. After that you can choose, right? So if I pull here, I break his balance. Oh, one, one. I start working my pass. Obviously, you can do it here. A lot of things, right? If you know umbers, you know black belt umbers, you can finish here. One, two. Look, I can go. Right. Then you got on it. One. The trap. I can back up. I can go for my choke. I can go for my choke. The most comprehensive judo instructional covering all 67 throws of Kodokan Judo is finally here. Juan Montenegro is a sixth degree red and white belt in judo and is supremely qualified to demonstrate and teach all 67 official Kodokan throws. You've probably seen some or many of these throws before, but now you can get them all in an easy to follow instructional where you can quickly select one of the 67 chapters to review. Seven throws of Kodokan Judo by Juan Montenegro on the app at budovideos.tv or on DVD at budovideos.com. In martial arts, a common expression is to leave your ego at the door. 
You right. probably heard that before. Right. Um, I've, I've heard that my whole life, but I don't always experience that. Uh, particularly in jiu-jitsu, it's a very competitive sport, yes, and uh, especially when you're competing with a lower belt, nobody wants to lose. But in judo, I feel that, that people are a little better about leaving their ego at the door. How do you how do you teach that? Yes, because what you come to the dojo is respect is is like a dojo, it's like a church, right? And then we have we have rules in judo. So in every student coming to the dojo, he need to follow of the rules, you know. You know, and if if I, you got ego, you know, judo we don't do that in judo. We don't teach that. What do you do if you see a student that's uh, mm -hmm. too rough or you know brings his ego onto the mat? How do you how do you do that? Uh, I don't like it. It, it, it is since the beginning. I trying to explain him what is the rules and what is supposed to be done. You know, if obviously it is, if the person it doesn't follow of the rules, we don't need it yeah. at the dojo. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest learning experiences I had in judo was visiting the Kodokan in Tokyo. Yes. And I was watching the training, and I was seeing red and white belts out there being taken down by white belts. And it was no big deal. They just got up, and they kept training. And I thought, wow, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you'll never see six degree black belt being taken down yeah, by women. They'll never allow that to happen. Yeah. Um, and I just thought, wow, that's a very different training methodology that you allow a lower belt to take you down. How, how, what is the rationality or philosophy behind that? Because the battle like it, it is, I think in judo, it is you need a, another person to know judo, it's two people. You know, and both we need to help each other. You know, so even if I sense a teacher, you know, if I work out with you, you know, I can throw you and you can th throw me. You know, so that way the both together we can get much better in judo. Right. You know, so it's no, it's no, it's no, it's no ego. In other words, if you're just constantly throwing the lower belt, it's right. going to be exactly. hard for him to learn. Yeah, exactly. Right. One way. One, you gotta get one in. One. Now you got up and you, you choose one. And we do the same now. One, we go back. You see, because most people will defend this way. He's defending because he's he's defending. So I cannot turn over and also neck, right? Your neck, right? The choke, right? That's this common common thing. What? You wanna defend like this. Right? Choke or pain? White belt, blue belt. So you go one, one, here, one. So when you pull him, pull him, one in. Now you got a bit open here. So that's the same thing. You want to catch, whatever you want to catch, I want to catch. One here, now if you want to keep going that way, one, I can switch. Now we start with. And you're ready. Right. Okay. You got to put the arm so you can get the arm. Because if you throw, but you get the phone, you have to worry about it, right? But if I want to do something else, if you throw one, but you don't want to do the armbar, then you go one, see, now you're here, one, see, now you're here, you see. So now from here to go for armbar is possible, but now he's, he's trapping, so now we need to break this one. So thank you, another work. It can be done, but it's not easy. But if I want to go for the standard immediately for for armbar, that's where you, you throw it, you pull it right away, and basically, basically you just jump. Right? Oh. Mm. Mm. Once you get it up, you want to be able to pull it because here there's no gap. That's the key. Right? So that's the key point that you go in. You know, because if you got gap here, so that's hard to you know, finish, finish, right? You can, you can escape. So once you lock this here like this, and this leg, you smash his face. What? Now you can finish. You got time, right? And, and then if you want to pull, no. If you get time, I throw him. 
Now, he, when you start pulling, put it here, and he knows I, I'm going for, for my armbar, a lot of times he will turn now, turn me. Yes, this way. Right, because he knows he's got that way. I want to catch it down. Right, so you go one, once I, once I, he starts pulling, pull it this one. One, he starts come, 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 me. Now I catch it this one. Now you go to the other side. So when, when he turns, and then that's where you scoop, you're going to go to the other way. So, so one is going this way, the other you can change. Right? Because at times people don't know. So once you throw, if, if he's not reacting, and then now, now you got easy, right? Shoot. But if he knows I'm going, oop, so you practice for one. I want to go back. But Juju, he come. Now you're going to learn how to scoop in this. See, now, now I'm here. I mean, you can go from here, different things if you want, but we should work with Juju. Come in. What do you think is the biggest myth of judo? What's something that people don't understand about judo? I think that uh, judo, and I mean, right now, I think, I don't think in America is popular anyway, this sport, but I think a, a lot of people miss the, what it's all about about judo and the rules. You know, pe because people watch, but they don't really understand, you know, what's going on. When I talk to jiu-jitsu guys, the thing I hear the most from them about judo is that, no, I'm too old to practice judo, or judo is too rough, or I don't want to get injured. Do you think judo is really that much more dangerous than jiu-jitsu? Um, I don't think so. You know, it's, I think, but all I get is that people have to know, learn how to do judo. And the judo is, is a sport good. It's for everyone, but you need to start from the bottom. You know, and it's, it's very uh, sporting. I mean, you can uh, learn since the beginning, you know, how to fold the basics, fundamental, and you don't need to do, do a lot of sparring or hardcore. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the 
to the jiu-jitsu student that says, I don't need judo, I don't need to know any takedowns, I can just pull guard every time, every match that I want and just go to the ground where I am strong. What do you say to that person? You know what, you know, I, I think, you know, the more you know, the more you learn, you are bit off, you know, e even as something, you know, myself, you know, I've been doing both and I have respect for both sport and I willing to learn, you know, so, you know. Yeah. And they both come from the same place. And, and they come in, yeah, as a player. And I think that's a, a myth of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is that guys are just going to pull guard on the street. <laughs> right? Yeah. No one's going to do that. You know, right. So right. Everybody needs to know a couple take downs. Yeah. Although I spend most of my time in BJJ gyms, I have to say, I feel very much at home in Japanese style dojos like this one. Although far from Japan, Juan Montenegro has built a dojo that has the ideals that judo strives to teach. With a focus on discipline, respect, and good hard training, the judo spirit is alive and well at OC Judo. I hope you enjoyed that 50th episode of Rolled Up. I had a lot of fun practicing judo, something that I've done off and on throughout the years, but not something I do regularly. It's always fun to go outside of your comfort zone and apply your skills in another endeavor. So I'm curious about you. Do you practice judo? Do you practice it as it's done in a judo dojo? Do you practice judo for jujitsu? Let me know in the comments below. How would you like to watch episodes of Rolled Up without the YouTube ads? How would you like to see bonus features that weren't included in the original episodes? Old episodes, new episodes, downloaded directly to your smartphone, now you can. Go to budovideos.tv and become a subscriber. For only $6.99 a month or $59 a year, you can see all the old and new episodes of Rolled Up. Also, comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. It was, uh...